So next what we're going to evaluate is the sensory system. In general rule, sensory evaluation is not done as part of a normal screening neurologic exam. It's generally done um, when you have specific specified abnormalities that you suspect. So if a patient has specific areas where they're complaining of pain or numbness, or if you find an area in the motor exam or during the reflexes that's abnormal, those are the areas you're going to want to focus on. There are a few tenets you need to make sure that you're paying attention to when you're doing these evaluations. You want to make sure that if you find an abnormality that you map it out. Don't just say, okay, it's abnormal there. Find out the boundaries of that abnormality. You want to make sure that you compare side to side, so right versus left, and always compare proximally to distally. When we're doing the evaluation, you need to explain it fully to the patient first so they know what it is that they're going to tell you whether they can feel or not. Um, and finally, do the evaluation with the patient's eyes closed. Because again, you want to make sure that the patient is not using visual cues, but only using their sensory system to tell you whether or not the sensation is there. So what we're going to evaluate for now is to demonstrate pain um, sensation in some specific areas where we know the uh, nerve root for those uh, as a demonstration of the exam. So we're going to start with pain. Um, so for pain response, we want to use a sharp object, but not something that's going to cause injury. So frequently what we'll use is a tongue blade that we've broken to make it kind of sharp and pointy. We want to make sure that you use a new implement on every patient every time. So I'm just going to snap in a twisting motion the tongue blade so that one end is kind of pointy and another side is dull. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate for the patient what is considered sharp. So with their eyes open so they can see what they're doing. So can I have your hand? Um, and so what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, I'm going to demonstrate for you what sharp is. So this is a sharp sensation and this is a dull sensation. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm going to do now is evaluate a sharp versus dull in three locations on the hand. So the first one I'm going to do is the web space between the first and second finger. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and let me know um, where you're feeling it. Uh, in between my thumb. No sharp. Middle finger sharp. Pinky finger sharp. And do the same thing on the other hand. And let me know where you feel it. Middle finger. Pinky. Oh, in between my thumb and pointer finger. So you want to make sure that you're doing the same thing on the lower extremity as well. Uh, so we're going to, again, check for sharp and dull on both feet. So we'll start here. And I just want to ask you to close your eyes. Uh, again, and let me know um, if you feel and just tell me if it's sharp or dull. Sharp. 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 You want to make sure that you can also evaluate light touch. We can do it in the same locations, um, but you do it with a wisp of cotton. So again, if you could open up your eyes for me, I'm going to show you what it is. So this is light touch. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then you would do it in the same locations, um, testing for light touch. So next we want to be able to test vibratory sense. So in this sensation, we want to be able to test if the patient actually can feel the vibration. So generally what we do is we put the tuning, we use a vibratory tuning fork, which is a 128 hertz tuning fork. Um, you want to use it against a bony prominence. We're going to do both the upper and the lower extremity. When we do this, um, if we find an abnormality in the distal parts, so we're going to start with the toe, then I would move inward and see if they can feel the vibration inward. To make sure that they're truly sensing the vibration, what you would generally do is put the tuning fork on their vibrating and ask them to tell you when the vibration stops. And then you can touch the tuning fork to stop the vibration, um, and they should be able to tell you that the vibration has stopped. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with your hand. Alrighty. So what I'm going to do is put the tuning fork, again, after I've struck it, against here on your hand. All right, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and then tell me when the vibration stops. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So strike the tuning fork. Do you feel the vibration? Mm -hmm. Tell me when it stops. No. Okay. And again, do the same thing on the other hand. You feel the vibration? Mm -hmm. Tell me when it stops. And again, do the same thing in the lower extremity. So we're going to again use the joint of the big toe. 
Tell me when you can feel the vibration. No. And let me know when it stops. No. And again, you should be able to do that in both extremities bilaterally. Finally, we want to test for proprioception or position sense. So we can generally do this, again, using the, the thumb and the great toe. And again, we want to be able to see that they can sense the position. So you want to do this with the patient's eyes closed, and you don't want to give them extra cues as to what it is. So I'm going to start with your hand. I'm going to take the thumb. Close your eyes for me. I'm going to grab the thumb on either side, not top and bottom. If I use top and bottom, then they can feel the pressure pushing up below and pushing down from above, and use that as a cue as to which direction it's moving. If I do it from the sides, they won't have that same cue. All right, so this is up, this is down. Can you tell the difference? Mm -hmm. All right, so now what I'm going to do is ask you to tell me whether it's up or down, okay? Okay. So move the joint a couple of different times. Up. Up. Down. Okay. And make sure you do that in both sides so you can see that it's symmetrical. So I'm going to grab hold of his large toe on either side of the joint. I'm going to move it up and down and have him demonstrate up versus down for me. Okay? So if you could close your eyes. This is up. This is down. Can you tell the difference? Yeah. All righty. So I'm just going to, you tell me when it's up or it's down. Okay? Okay. Keep your eyes closed. Down. Up. Up. And then you do the same thing on the other side. In addition to a general sensory evaluation, you also need to be able to make sure that you can do an evaluation for peripheral, peripheral neuropathies, such as a stocking glove distribution, which you'll see in diabetic neuropathy. So what you want to do is using a sharp sensation start off distally and move proximally. A patient may have a sensation that it's sharp out in the distal part, but as you move inward, all of a sudden that sensation changes to a sharper feeling, um, and that will be a demonstration that the patient might have um, peripheral neuropathy. So ask the patient to close their eyes, and I'm going to um, do sharp testing, and as I move inwards, you let me know if at any point it changes. And let me know if it feels sharp or dull. Sure. If you were to have evidence of a stocking glove distribution, as I moved more proximally, the sensation would have changed. You want to make sure that you do that both in the upper extremity and the same thing in the lower extremity, starting out of the toe and moving more upwards towards the pro proximal part of the leg. So if someone has an intact sensory system, you can then move on to do the special sensory senses. Um, if the primary sensory system is abnormal, then there's no reason to do these additional testing because they will be abnormal as well. So the first one is um, stereognosis, which is the ability to recognize an object when placed in your hand. You can use something like a key or a coin. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Open up your palm for me. I'm going to put something in your hand and I want you to tell me what it is. It's a key. Okay, you can feel it a little bit more. It's a key? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, again, as I said, you can do the same thing with a coin as a different object. Um, next, we want to be able to evaluate for graphesthesia. So that's the ability to recognize something that's been drawn on the palm. So you can use like a number three or a number four. So again, I want you to tell me what number I'm writing on your palm. Four. Three. Okay. And again, that should be the same in both hands. Next is two-point discrimination. We should be able to recognize when two things versus one thing are um, touched to the fingertip. So what you can use is a paper clip that's been bent so that you can, again, move the two points closer together if you need to. So I'm going to basically touch this to your finger, and I want you to tell me if you feel one versus two. Okay? Okay. Okay. Closer than uh, five millimeters, you should be able to recognize that. Much closer than that, and it tends to become one. You can open up your eyes. 
So now we're going to do point localization. I should be able to touch your patient anywhere on their body, and they should be able to tell me what location I'm touching. So what I'm going to do is have you close your eyes. I'm going to touch you, and I want you to tell me what, where I'm touching you. Okay? Uh, left eye. Right eye. Okay. So now what we can do is extinction. If extinction is present, if I'm touching on both, they should be able to recognize both. But if I keep touching on both, and they have uh, abnormality in the parietal lobe, um, uh, they will stop recognizing it as both sides and start telling you it's just one. So we're going to do that again. I'm going to touch you somewhere, and I want you to tell me where it is that I'm touching you. Okay? Left eye. Right thigh. Both. Both thighs. So after a while, again, if he had evidence of neglect, he would stop telling me that I was touching on one side, and again, it would start becoming just the one side. 